Welcome to Vitality Made Simple, the podcast that helps you live better, look better, and more fully enjoy the relationships in your life. It is my distinct pleasure to have Dr. William Davis here today. He is someone uh, that I've read all his books. I never thought I would get to meet him. He is a, a health crusader. He's a board certified cardiologist. He is a researcher. And of course, uh, one of the things I respect the most about him, he is brave and curious. And he is fearless when it comes to helping people find root cause problems. Uh, you know, so many times uh, physicians are trained just to treat symptoms, but Dr. Davis broke away from that system. And now he is empowering people to get healthy from the inside out. So welcome, Dr. Davis. Uh, thank you, Dr. Osmond. I'm very impressed that you understand the, uh, the advantage of curiosity, of being curious, because so many of our colleagues have lost that ability and they accept, for instance, the uh, dictates of big pharma at word for word, which is awful. Curiosity really pays. It, it really does. And it's really the only way that we um, can help ourselves, I think. You know, it's it's discernment. And but it's but you've got to have curiosity. You've got to find other people who are willing to step out people like you to step out and say, Hey, this doesn't make sense to keep doing surgery on these hearts, surgery, 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 and nobody really gets better. So, you know, how did you come to that epiphany? You know, it was a kind of an evolution. It didn't happen overnight. It started about 25 years ago when my mom who was living in New Jersey at the time, uh, underwent a two vessel coronary angioplasty. And that was what I did. I, I didn't do my mom's procedure, of course. I was I had just moved to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They brought me in to set up a lot of new technologies in stent implantation, eczema laser, uh, 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 coronary atherectomy, all the new devices that were coming out about then. This is the mid-90s, early 90s, mid-90s. Well, my mom had to go undergo a two-vessel coronary angioplasty, and then several months later, uh, had sudden cardiac death at home. Um, well, it was this is the disease that I managed every day in a cath lab. And, and it, it illustrated to me how pointless it was to try to manage a disease as dangerous as coronary disease in a catheterization laboratory when most people die on route or silently at home or something like that, or a heart attack. And so I asked this question back then, is there a way to identify people at risk a year two years, five years, 10 years before that kind of thing happens. And this remains true even today. The only real method, by the way, it's, it's not cholesterol testing, this useless, outdated piece of crap. No one should be testing anymore. That it should have been abandoned decades ago. But the method that was uh, remains very helpful is coronary calcium scoring, a CT heart scan to obtain a coronary calcium score. Well, back then, the only device that did that, did that was fast enough to image a, an organ, the heart, that's moving. It's always moving. Uh -huh. There's multiple phases of motion. There's respiratory motion, of course, and human motion. And so you need a, a, a scanner that's extremely fast. Back then, it was an electron beam tomography device. Now it's a multi-detector CT scanner. Uh, but we got one. It was the first one in Wisconsin. It was among the first in the entire Midwest. And we started scanning people. And this very quick scan, low radiation exposure, yields a coronary calcium score. Calcium occupies 20% of total atherosclerotic plaque volume. So it's a, it's a dipstick. It's a gauge for total plaque. And as we started to scan thousands of people, we're finding early heart disease everywhere. Well, what do you do about it to stop it? Well, we help publish these data if you do nothing. So a normal score is zero. And the higher the score, the more danger you're in. If you get to a score of 1,000, for instance, your life of dying or having a heart attack is about 15% per year. So it's a crystal ball. You know, if you have a score of 1,000 or higher, within about seven years, you're going to be dead or have a need for a procedure or have a heart attack. It's that confident, unlike cholesterol. And so what do you do to stop it? Well, if you do nothing the score goes up 25% per year. It's, it's horrifying how fast oh it goes up. Oh my goodness, 25% per year. So imagine that's money, right? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. But it's not money. <laughs> yeah. It's, a it's full coronary plaque. Yeah. 
So back then and today, my colleagues call a high dose of a statin cholesterol drug, a daily baby aspirin, a low fat diet, low saturated fat diet, exercise program. They call that optimal medical therapy. So we help publish these data. What happens when you put somebody on optimal medical therapy? How fast does that coronary calcium score go up? 25% per year. It has zero impact on that measure. Zero. And of course, as your score goes up, you're getting closer and closer to some catastrophe. So people are freaking out, right? My unscrupulous colleagues, of course, say, whoa, well, we'll do the real test, a heart catheterization, and do a prophylactic stent or bypass surgery, which is oh, unethical. Goodness. It's it's goodness. malpractice, but it's done all the time because it pays very well. So I'm trying, I'm not going to do that, right? So a lot, of, a lot of trial and error trying to figure out how to put a stop to this, but new lessons. When I first put people on vitamin D, not for coronary reasons, for other reasons. Uh -huh. oh, this is 10 plus years ago. I, for the first time, before vitamin D, we, I was able to slow down those increases in calcium score from 25%, maybe like 12%, 8%, 8%, 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 8%. 
And, and I suspect too, Dr. Davis, that you saved a lot of people from um, mental decline, memory decline. In my own clinical practice, I had several couples who were just scared to death of heart disease and they went on these uh, restrictive low fat diets and just, you know, and develop memory loss in their 60s. I mean, it's something I, I started noticing because they were just rabid about fat, you know, reading low fat, low fat. And um, so there is no telling how many people literally you have helped, will never know, but helped, you know, resist losing losing their memory. And then, and then of course, with that comes losing uh, so much relational enjoyment in life. You know, it's it boils down to relationships. You know, you're, I, I absolutely agree that the 40 or 50 year experiment, social experiment in cutting or reducing dietary fat uh, showed us just what a disaster that is for all sorts of reasons, including cognitive impairment. Fat is necessary. Nobody should be reducing fat. I don't care if you're overweight or have ApoE4 or whatever, <laughs> and no one should be restricting fat. Yet that continues to be the message of conventional in conventional circles. They're sticking to it. The American Heart Association renewed uh, or reemphasized, reiterated their dietary advice to restrict dietary fat, saturated fat. And they actually said this based on the studies conducted in the 1950s and 1960s. And of course, that was a time when clinical trial design was not a, uh, a precise science. And this, the, the studies that were published are essentially garbage. They're worthless. And that is the basis for a lot of the American Heart Association's dietary advice. I, I think what's happened is, uh, I think smart people, th th there are some smart people in those agencies, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, USDA, American Heart Association. There's some smart people, but I think they realized they made a big mistake. Mm -hmm. But you don't admit it because there's right. liability, there's pride, lots of reasons. So they stick to their message that is, as you point out, very destructive for a variety of reasons. It, it sort of reminds me of the More Doctors campaign, More Doctors Smoke Camels, you know, back <laughs> in the 40s. And then, you know, the um, I think the AMA Journal didn't publish, I, I could be off on a, a year or two on this, but didn't publish that cigarettes were bad until like 1976 or something. Really admit it. And so similar deal with, oh, we, we can't say we're wrong. Um, you know, th that's more important than people's lives. Apparently it's just unreal. So, so you wrote the best-selling book, Wheat Belly, and then the books that go with that. There's so many great books with that, uh, about with recipes and just helping people develop that, that grain-free lifestyle. Um, so then you wrote a book that I loved called Undoctored. It, it, it to me was so brave because you just lay it out there and pretty much, I mean, my, this is my interpretation, Dr. Davis, but if insurance pays for it, you don't want it. <laughs> I mean, that would be my, my short story. You want to do things for yourself to not need to tap into your dental, um, your medical insurance. Dental insurance is, you know, terrible too. Um, so then you wrote super gut and I have seen it change countless lives in the last six months, just in my circle of, of patients, friends, family, you know, I mean, everywhere I go, somebody stops me and says, okay, I'm ready for a starter of super gut. And so um, tell us, tell the listeners about super gut. It's, it's incredible. I guess it starts with L-ruteri. I, I guess we should start with lactobacillus ruteri, this, this bacteria that um, is sort of the lost microbe, you call it. It's, it was in our bodies from the beginning of time, but because of modern life, because of antibiotics, glyphosate, who knows what else, uh, that microbe can't live unless we put it back in. Um, I love hearing you talk about its many benefits. Tell us about that. Well, it became clear that just doing the basic program, that is what we call wheat belly or wheat belly 10 day grain detox or the undoctored program, which is really just wheat grain sugar elimination, these things that never belong in the human diet in the first place, and then addressing common nutrient deficiencies unique to modern life. Uh, not, not because of the diet, but because of the way we conduct our, li our lives. For instance, we work indoors and wear clothes in public 
you don't get exposed to enough vitamin D. And it's winter. I live in a northern climate. You, you, <laughs> you could go naked outside today and you won't get any sun, the activation of vitamin D in the skin. So we take vitamin D. We take magnesium because we have to filter our water. We have to. We don't have a choice. Water in rivers and streams has sewage and farm runoff, so we have to filter it. But water filtration removes all magnesium. And we also uh, supplement omega-3 fatty acids and iodine. So those four, combined with the diet, by the way, have dramatic effects on reducing insulin resistance, the process underlying coronary disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's dementia, uh, and so many other conditions. So you put the, that whole thing together, you get big effects. But not always 100% relief from um, uh, most com from common conditions. For instance, someone might say this, I did the wheat belly, no wheat, no grains, and vitamin D, et cetera. And my rheumatoid arthritis is 90% better. I'm off the biologic, saving me thousands of dollars per month. I'm off the prednisone. I'm losing weight because of that. But I still have to take occasional naproxen or ibuprofen for occasional flare-ups. So I asked, well, what, what are we missing here? Now we did add, I did add basic efforts to cultivate a healthy microbiome, a high potency multi-species probiotic, prebiotic fibers, like onions, garlic, shallots, leeks, dandelion greens, et cetera, mm -hmm. and, and fermented foods. But even with those basic efforts, there seemed to be something missing. And that's when we dove deep into the microbiome. And as you point out, so one of the things that's become clear in the microbiology community is that all the things we've been exposed to that you listed antibiotics, glyphosate, uh, food additives like preservatives mm -hmm. that kill microbes. We've lost hundreds of, of species in our GI microbiomes, many of which are very important. One of the most important losses is that microbe you mentioned, lactobacillus roteri, it's very susceptible to common antibiotics like amoxicillin. So if you took amoxicillin uh, 20 years ago, you lost your roteri more than likely. And roteri is ubiquitous. In primitive humans, unexposed to antibiotics. So if we went to the jungles of New Guinea and looked at their stool, they all have rotorite, every one of them. If we looked at the microbiome of squirrels and chickens and gophers and dog, they all have rotorite. So, but we don't have it anymore. We've lost it. Almost all humans have lost rotorite, at least in the Western world. And so, and the, the science, the animal evidence uh, from MIT was especially compelling. Between 2013 and 2017, this cancer group at MIT were interested in the cancer killing effect of rotori, but they started to see all kinds of unanticipated effects, like a dramatic acceleration of healing of skin wounds, cutting healing time in half. They saw the elderly mice who had lost muscle. So that's true for humans also, we lose about 35% of our muscle or more as we age, was restored back to youthful levels. Uh, testosterone in males was restored back to youthful levels. Uh, mating behavior increased. Uh, 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 bone density increased. And so I thought, hey, let's give this a try in humans. <clears throat> it, it was a commercial product, actually, from a company called BioGaia, a company in Sweden, and they're selling it as a product for babies. <clears throat> pardon me, called gastrus, G-A-S-T-R-U-S. And it has two strains of rotori in it. Now, when we play with microbes, as you know, Dr. Osmond, we have to pay attention to strain. So my best illustration is E. coli. So I have E. coli, your listeners have E. coli, right? But what if you ate lettuce contaminated by cow manure and E. coli? Well, you can die of that E. coli. <laughs> Same species, different strain. So this gastrus tablet has two strains of rotori. I think the most important one is the 6475. And I'm sorry, these I don't make these designations up. <laughs> uh, but it's made for babies. So the number of microbes is trivial. And so I thought, let's increase the numbers. We're going to do it by fermenting it as yogurt. It's not yogurt. It looks like yogurt, but it's not yogurt. Yogurt is something you buy in a store or make at home that has almost no health benefits. This is something very different. But I used a simple logic. I said, so rotori doubles. So microbes don't have sex, right? There's no male, female microbes. They just double asexual reproduction. One becomes two, two becomes four, so on. So rotori doubles about every three hours at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, body temperature, human body temperature, around human body temperature. Well, when they make yogurt in a 
factory. They allow it to ferment or grow for about six hours, four to six hours. Well, if rotorite doubles every three hours, you're not going to get much. So I allowed it to double 12 times or 36 hours. So prolonged fermentation. I also added a prebiotic fiber, like adding cow manure to your tomato garden, bigger tomatoes, right? Yeah. Uh, and we did perform flow cytometries. It's a uh, laser-assisted uh, way to count microbes. We're getting around 250 or 300 billion microbes per half cup serving. We consume it, and all the effects that were reported in mice and somewhat in humans also, we're seeing play out in people who consume the yogurt. Smoother skin, loss of wrinkles, increased skin moisture, acceleration of healing, increased libido, increased muscle and strength, deeper sleep, vivid dreams. Uh, uh, now, now I, I think about this. Uh, and there's clinical data in humans to show that bone density is preserved also. So faster healing, smoother skin, increased muscle, increase. We're turning the clock back 10 or 20 years, I believe. Uh, that's just one microbe, of course, that's left the cells of the I, I think it's among the most interesting, though. I don't know if we're going to find more like rotori, but that is a very... So we have people... I, I had my... I just moved, as you know. But uh, before I moved, my entire neighborhood was making the rotori yogurt. Yeah. I'd, have, <laughs> I'd have parties at my house and share some of the yogurt because that's all you have to... All you need is a little bit of the yogurt. You can make your own yogurt from it. It's very easy, but it's not the stuff you buy in the store. No, it's super delicious to all the listeners. And so, so buy, buy super good, the book. I tell people start by reading this, the book, and then we can talk about El Ruderai. We can talk about, you know, the, the actually what I call super gut yogurt. I know you call it SIBO yogurt. The, the thing about, about it that I love Dr. Davis, that this is truly inside out health. Uh, I personally am um, reluctant and suspicious of any um, injectable cosmetics. Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, but for me, I want I want metabolic health. I want inside out health. Um, so this just really tripped my trigger because it makes sense. And then also, you know, from the relationship point, it stimulates oxytocin. And that is really just thrilling because, you know, as we know in this world, people need to have more patience with each other, get along better, um, have more empathy. You know, all of all of these things translate to better relationships. And and, you know, to my listeners, you know, I, I consider these bodies our relationship vehicle. Um, we're not going to do anything that we can make ourselves live forever, but we want to live better while we're here and more fully enjoy our relationships. So to me, that's what you've done. Uh, the, the whole oxytocin angle is something that people start noticing within a week. And the better sleep, of course, that translates to feeling better. And then they're pooping better, so they're feeling better. I mean, it's just this whole circle of of a better life. Go back to this MIT study that you mentioned about the cancer killing effects of L-ruteri. Um, what what cancers were affected there? So this was an in vitro that is like a test tube preparation. Mm -hmm. So it's it's uh, <clears throat> we don't want to extrapolate too far to say it protection from cancer so it's still unexplored so we don't really know how much of an advantage rotary is but it does have some very interesting other effects as you point out such as uh the provocation of ox now we don't know how widely this applies to all different strains of rotary we're, we're running animal experiments to try to understand which strains of rotary there are 200 known strains do all of them do it do only a handful do it is the bio guy six percent is that the only we don't know so um, so we're in the midst of trying to understand that better and also how to optimize that effect. There may be other things we can do to boost oxytocin because as you point out, oxytocin is the hormone of love and empathy. And when you get a rise in oxytocin, you get an increase in the intensity of affection for the people close to you, increased generosity, my favorite, acceptance of other people's opinions. So real important social implications of this, of, the, uh, of this yogurt. And another aspect of rotary, you know, this one, this one microbe, you could make a career out of it. So interesting. 
It also colonized, very uniquely, colonized the entire length of the GI tract from mouth to anus, all 30-some feet, including the small intestine, the 24 feet of small intestine, where it takes up residence in the duodenum jejunum ileum and then produces what are called bactericins. These are natural antibiotics effective against the species of SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which, as you know, is now epidemic. Yes. By my estimation, one in two Americans have this process, SIBO. I absolutely agree with what I see with testing. Fecal microbes like E. coli and Klebsiella and Campylobacter, also, the, by the way, the species of food poisoning. These are fecal microbes. Uh, they've ascended into the small bowel because of the loss of all those beneficial species that were suppressing them. But now fecal microbes have climbed up. And, well, Rotary takes up residence. We're restoring this lost microbe. It takes up residence in the small intestine and produces antibiotics effective against the species of SIBO. Now, I wouldn't use Rotary alone as a treatment for SIBO. We've been combining, as you point out, what I call SIBO yogurt. Uh, or I like what you call it in your YouTube video, super gut yoga. I wish I, I wish I thought of that, but uh, we combine it with that. I got it from you, Dr. Davis. <laughs> so we combine it with lactobacillus gasseri, another lost species that likewise colonized the upper GI tract and produces up to seven bactericins. And I also threw in some bacillus coagulants, uh, which by the way, is the most delicious yogurt you'll ever have if you, if you ferment it by itself. So we co-ferment those three, and so far, this is anecdote, but so far, of 40 people who've done that, eaten this SIBO yogurt for four weeks, 90% have can, have gotten rid of their SIBO, as evidenced by normalization of, do I have my device? You know, since I moved, I can't find anything. Oh, your air device? Oh, yeah, I can't. I don't have my device here. But it's the air device that measures hydrogen gas. It's a consumer device, talks to your smartphone. Zero to 10 tells you how much hydrogen bacteria are producing in your gut. Uh, so it's a it's really a device to map out where microbes are living in your GI tract. And so far, of 40 people who've done it, 90% have converted to negative. So, which is far beyond my expectations. Phenomenal. I mean, what other simple food does that, that we can measure? I mean, this is just incredible. Took me by surprise, you know, the best mm -hmm. that conventional medicine has. Well, as you know, uh, most of my colleagues don't know what SIBO is. They don't, they don't follow the science. It takes a generation for most of my colleagues to catch up to the science. So if you go to the gastroenterologist and say, I think I, I, think I have SIBO, he's going to say, well, did you consult Dr. Google again? Or some oh, other smart ass right. Yeah, they, they resort to shaming. Mm -hmm. it's crazy and I, I tell people when we do when i find you know fusobacterium nucleatum in the mouth i do a stool test to see if it's colonized in the gut and so i'll say take this to your gastroenterologist tell tell your physician to call me and nobody's ever called but one doctor recently said oh this is pretty pretty colors but it's meaningless and you know this is this is dna i mean this is a CLIA certified lab and, uh, you know, similar, similar things, but that's why I, uh, salute you in your curiosity. It, it takes a lot of guts to be curious, Dr. Davis. You know, that is so forward looking. I am so impressed when you told me that, that you're testing saliva for this microbe fusobacterium nucleatum, and then confirming whether it's present in the, in the bowels also, because your listeners should know that that is pr proving to be an extremely potent cause for colon cancer. So rather than putting people through periodic colonoscopies and telling them stupid things like eat more brand fiber, which is ridiculous, uh, they should be looking for fusobacterium in the mouth and in the colon. And then, as you point out, take steps to eradicate it. And that is likely to be that clinical trial has not yet been done, but it, I think it will be done. Uh, eradicate that microbe, address oral health, of course, and you probably reduce the potential for colon cancer dramatically. So I'm so impressed that this functional dentist does this. Well, thanks, but it goes back to it goes back to super gut. I mean, I have all my patients now read your book and you know start with the yogurt or start start with l ruteri is what i do first 
kind of, you know, start low, go slow. Um, so they don't have a big uh, rebound reaction, but then to start incorporating your four week uh, lifestyle change, you know, once in a while, uh, Dr. Davis, you see somebody who's like, Ooh, that's really difficult. And I say, it's really difficult to be sick. <laughs> That's well, way more difficult. To not do it. And, you know, uh, but but by the time people get to me, usually they feel pretty bad. So they're ready to to make changes. But I, I think um, it's just so root cause to heal the gut. I mean, even if people are taking a handful of expensive supplements, if their gut's not healthy, they're they're not getting the full benefit from those or any other medicine. I mean, and I agree, 50 percent SIBO. Um, you know, when you see sick people, you sort of think it's a hundred percent because everybody you see has, you know, they all have bloating, they all have brain fog, they all have all these problems, but then they start, um, on l and eventually super, your, your formula, your, uh, super gut yogurt, and they start feeling better so fast. They're sort of amazed. And I think they're a little bit scared. In fact, I mean, scared from the aspect of like, Debbie, I'm, I'm feeling so good. Is this just, you know, temporary? And I'm like, no, your body's healing. This is, this is giving back what was designed into your body, what, what you have to have to function. You wouldn't have a vehicle that you um, expected to run well if you put in, you know, the wrong fuel. Um, so it's really very logical. And I just love it, love it, love it. The, um, so, okay, so one problem I've had, or one challenge I've had, but I think you've solved it for me, is that um, people go out of town and uh, they're they're so frustrated by the fact that they can't take their yogurt on the airplane. And so um, as part of, well, I would back up here, listeners, and say you might want to think about joining uh, Dr. Davis's inner circle. It's fascinating. It's It's Wednesday nights and it's this big discussion and all these people are, giving their ideas and Dr. Davis is giving a presentation, but um, through just, you know, researching all this l information, I found a, um, a supplement or nutrient that has l in it and um, have realized that it, you helped formulate it, but um, it's called gut to glow and it, it contains l uh, So just for my listeners from my own, standpoint uh i've been taking it has high hyaluronic acid it has um a form of collagen it has it has a it's a great option uh as a an added benefit uh and as something to take when you travel i mean we all want to look our best i want to look my best but i don't want looks to be the primary driving force i want inner metabolic health to be my driver always the main thing so um anyway i just wanted to mention uh this gut to glow product is is has worked for me and um it's, it's really super so what studies are you working on now dr davis uh so uh we did a skin study to show the effects of the components of the gut to glow we did see uh substantial improvement in skin health a thick uh, one of the main effects is thickening of the dermis. It's the dermal layer. The exterior, of course, is the epidermis. And then just below the epidermis is the dermis. And we did something called high-resolution skin ultrasound. And we did see a, uh, an increase in dermal thickness and moisture and smoothness. The it's the fine wrinkles, like the frown lines and the uh, crow's feet that are reduced in depth. So uh, as you point out, <clears throat> we're not injecting fillers. We're not... <clears throat> doing surgery, we're taking something that restores skin health. And the reason I added the marine source, collagen hydrolysates, the hyaluronic acid and the astaxanthin is I'm a big fan of trying to set things right to the way they're supposed to be. Like rotary, all we're doing is restoring a microbe that we all should have had all along, like, like dogs and, and squirrels mm -hmm. uh, and indigenous human populations. And people have gotten so squeamish about eating, eating organ meats, so almost nobody continues to eat heart, tongue, brain, pancreas, liver, etc. But those were the sources for hyaluronic acid and collagen. Wow! So we sh we should be getting you know we should have, we should have gotten up this morning, grabbed our spear clubber axe, went out and killed something, 
it may take you six to eight hours to find something like that. Drag it back to camp, gut it, eat the intestines and stomach, roast it over a fire, eat, crack open the skull, eat the brain, eat the thyroid, eat the heart, tongue, right, liver. And we would get a huge amount of collagen and hyaluronic acid. We'd also at the same time gather roots, tubers, berries, other fruit, other plants, and we get lots of carotenoids. Nasazanthin just happens to be the most potent carotenoid known. So we put those things together. Now you can get all kinds of health benefits from it, but I, we called the gut the glow because the ladies, as you put it, ladies is love. They go crazy for yeah. skin health. So we decided yeah. to target it for skin health first, even though it provides a lot of other benefits. And uh, it was in answer to ladies who said, I want to get all these benefits to my skin, but I'm going to be traveling. I don't want to make yogurt or I'm sick and tired of making it. <laughs> or it's really very simple as you know, to make the yogurt, but some people just never quite get it. <clears throat> and so they, they like the product uh, for that reason. So I did it for all those reasons uh, and, and convenience. No, and I thank you for it because it's actually uh, saved me money. I don't buy a separate hyaluronic acid anymore. Um, I've been intending to look for a good collagen. I, I haven't taken collagen, but I make bone broth. But nevertheless, um, I, I can tell. I can tell. I mean, around my eyes. I, you know, from a personal standpoint, I would recommend it. It just, it just makes sense. And of course, hyaluronic acid is good for every joint in the body. So um, I'm, I'm recommending it to all my pickleball friends because <laughs> that's, that we all need it out there, out there on the court. You make an excellent point. Uh, I believe that this will prove to be, we haven't done the clinical trial yet. We've had this plan for a future that it also benefits osteoarthritis or joint health because uh, there's preliminary evidence that rotary may stimulate cartilage growth, collagen stimulates cartilage growth. Hyaluronic acid also stimulates cartilage growth and adds to the lubricating liquid um, in, the, in the synovium, in the synovial fluid, the lubricant in, in joints. So I believe we may also be uh, talking about how this may benefit joint health long-term. That is thrilling. Now, that is inside out health, changing people's lives. Wow. Oh, very exciting. Very, very exciting. Well, Dr. Davis, thank you so much for being on Vitality Made Simple. Um, I'm just really honored to have you. I'm honored to know you. I look forward to Wednesday nights. Um, and I would just invite people to, to tune in. Uh, you, you'll find Dr. Davis at uh, drdavisinfinitehealth.com. That's D-R-D-A-V-I-S, infinitehealth.com. He also has a terrific podcast. Uh, called Defiant Health, D-E-F-I-A-N-T Health. You'll find that on all major podcast directories. And he's um, he'll just take a subject and dive in deep or he'll have a guest. And so uh, it's going to benefit your life. It's going to benefit your relationships to uh, get to know the vast knowledge of Dr. William Davis. Thank you so much for being on today. Thank you, Dr. Esmond. Thank you for what you're, you're doing. I know it takes courage and curiosity but you're doing something that people need. You're saying things people need to hear. Well, I'm learning from the best. And thank you for that. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.